So he keeps feeding these trawler logs, but he's run out of money. He's maybe gonna start feeding them people, but only bad people though. Ah. Ah. Mm. Ah. What's with these microphones? They're in the way. Yeah, everyone has microphones in the shot, man. We have to get with the times. We gotta be cool. Everyone's doing it. Okay. And uh, take one of these. What's this? It's a script. We don't use scripts. We ad lib the show. Yeah, just read it. Trust me. Before we get started, let's hear from our sponsor. We have a sponsor? No. But if people think we have a sponsor, they'll think we're in the big leagues. And put this on. What is this? It's a wig. We have to look younger. Take your wig, take your microphones, and stick them up your fucking ass. But I, I even made a new updated version of our theme with trap hats. Trap hats! Hello and happy Canada Day to fellow Canadians and non-Canadians <laughs> alike. Yeah. We are posting this special episode on Canada Day and we're going to cover a Canadian horror movie which is forgotten and underrated. What are we drinking? Portafoy's Paranoid Porter. Portafoy! Portafoy! Back Jeremy! Back! <laughs> this movie is actually a long time coming. Here we go. The Pit. Yeah. 1981. Directed by Lou Lehman. Sam Snyders is in this. The last acting credit that he's got is he was in The Littlest Hobo. That I'm sure you Canadian kids will remember. Yep. The theme song always brings a tear to your eye. Yeah. <laughs> when he's riding the train. Till tomorrow. <laughs> Janine Elias is in this, and she was in a movie that we covered, Nomads, with Pierce Brosnan. Jamie, our main character here, and he is in detention at school. He's writing on the chalkboard. I will not bring adult books to class. <laughs> and then it shows the teacher, like, thumbing through this book with all these naked women posing. The teacher goes and brings this book back to the library, because that's where he got it from. Gives it back to the librarian. The librarian like starts flipping through it and realizes there's like a page missing, unmarked envelope, and she opens it, a nude female, but someone's taken a picture of her and put her face on the body. Jamie, he's all peeking through the window and <laughs> it's all him, he did it. He's a little he's a little weirdo, yeah, right? Yeah. In the meantime, Jamie's mom is interviewing new babysitters because she's taken off with her husband to take care of some business they're gonna be gone for a long time so they need like a live-in babysitter she's interviewing sandy a psychology student she needs the money and she's telling about jamie like ah oh, jamie doesn't have many friends has a hard time keeping friends you know the, the other kids make fun of him he's a bit of a loner yeah in the meantime it shows jamie kind of like around the neighborhood and this like little girl making fun of him want to ride this bike he gets onto it and it falls yeah, apart yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. And now these old women are walking by. One blind woman is like in a wheelchair. They're making fun of the poor kid. Like, yeah, like in front of him. The mom also tells the babysitter he's got this teddy bear, Teddy, that he's always talking to. <laughs> parents have Sandy over for dinner to introduce her to Jamie. And Jamie all, oh, I dropped my napkin. I need to pick it up. And he all goes under the table looking up her skirt and everything. The oldest trick in the book. Yeah. And the dad's like, hey, none of that at the table. <laughs> Jamie starts falling in love with her, basically. Yeah. He's obsessed with her. He's peeking in at her while she's taking a shower. And he's writing all those notes to her on the mirror yeah, and shit. Yeah. Can you wash my back for me? <laughs> it's like, you're fucking 13 years old. Oh, well, you won't see anything. There's be suds in the yeah. tub. <laughs> Probably see his boner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All through the water. <laughs> like that tree root in Evil Dead yeah, 2. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie gets really serious and kind of wants to tell her the secret that he's been keeping. And tells her that he's found like a pit, these creatures down there that he's read about and he thinks they're either trolls or trollologs. Mm -hmm. She doesn't believe him. She's yeah. like, and of course, how could you believe him? And he's kind of like 
sad that she doesn't believe him about the trawler logs. Yeah. We see Jamie actually go to the pit, and he looks down, and he kind of talks to whatever's living in the pit, right? And he, he kind of comes to the realization that monsters or whatever, these trawler logs, need to be fed. Sneaking into the babysitter's room and stealing cash out of her wallet, and he uses the money, he goes down to the butcher, and buys these cheap cuts of meat. It's it's for my mom. She's gonna eat all this meat here. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. And it's just yeah, like the butchers are like, oh. <laughs> like what, whatever. Tell your mom to phone me when she gets back. <laughs> so he keeps feeding these trawler logs, but he's run out of money. So he tries stealing meat out of the back of this truck and he gets caught. He starts talking to Teddy and he starts to get the idea that he's maybe gonna start feeding them people. But only bad people though. One being the babysitter's boyfriend because he's gotten this fucking hard on for the babysitter, he's right? Jealous. <laughs> yeah. So he starts to slowly do away with all the people who have done him wrong. Sets up like this Foot, this football game tossing the football back and forth with the boyfriend and he leads him into the forest go long <laughs> he all lands in the pit the babysitter mentions that she hasn't seen her boyfriend in, in quite some time and Jamie kind of has this snide remark this look on his face too and he he's like what is that supposed to be my fault she fucking cuffs someone and it it ends, his demeanor changes right yeah. away. He tries to talk to her about the pit, and he's like, I want to show you, I want to show you the pit. And that's where we're going to end it. So if you want to see what happens with Jamie and the babysitter, what he's going to do, you don't know. Keep watching 1981's The Pit. So The Pit is one of those movies I remember renting as a kid <laughs> by accident. Thinking it was the gate. <laughs> I was just gonna, yeah. <laughs> or, or my mom rented for me, me wanting the gate, and she rented the pit by accident, or something like that. Yeah. And it's one of those movies that, like, as a kid, you won't appreciate. This is way above your head as a kid. This yeah. is more of an adult's movie. So you pop that tape in as a kid, expecting the gate, and you get the pit, and you're like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? Yeah, it's all boring yeah, for this, kids. This isn't the gate, but like as an adult, this movie is so chock full of themes and social commentary. Yeah. And it's a lot about childhood. That perfect age to be molded by something. And he gets molded all right. <laughs> He's screaming out for attention, right? Yeah. He has no friends. He tries, he does try, but the kids don't really take to him. Yeah. They kind of push him away or they bully him. That girl with the bike, like he legitimately tries to be her friend. His parents seem to have abandoned him. Like in yeah. the movie, like they leave for a very long time. Abandon my child! <laughs> I've abandoned my boy! This poor kid is not only being bullied by children and adults he's being abandoned by his parents yeah yeah he has no support i've abandoned my child the movie is really a social study of what shapes children child in his situation the pit is like this perfect outlet right trawler logs or whatever that's living at the bottom of this pit are like an extension of him these trawler logs need to be fed but it's him who needs yeah. To be fed right as well he needs love yeah he needs to be fed something too in this case it's love yeah the um, trawler logs it's meat <laughs> he also uses the trawler logs as revenge right and so the more he feeds it's interesting is the more he feeds these trawler logs the worse the situation yeah. gets and like the more empty he gets yeah and yeah. so the more he needs to feed it but nothing seems to get any better right? yeah it's getting worse it just actually. gets worse yeah it's a very interesting story in that way. The writer of the movie did do research on children who have, you know, social problems and stuff like that. And Jamie's based off that kind of kid. He needs something to fill this void in his life. And the pit and the trawler logs is it. It's yeah. something to love and care for. Even though it's a destructive thing. Yeah, and like, you know, kids, outcasts, who have no friends, they always find something to fixate on. You know, this is like... 
be it a video game or like a movie or a story that they get obsessed with. Well, with him, it's the pit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the pit symbolizes that emptiness in him, you know? There's nobody that believes him about this pit that he can show and they can say, well, no, Jamie, this isn't right. Yeah. Like, let's take you away from the pit and let's yeah. show you something better. Yeah, he's right? got no There's guidance. Nothing. There's no guidance. He's got no nothing. guidance in his life. It really is like a revenge story. Yeah. And it's funny that the pit symbolizes, like, the, the emptiness that revenge creates. You know, like, he thinks that it's going to make him feel better. Yeah, yeah, by feeding the pit these people that have harmed him. But really, it's like you said, it's made it worse. It's an empty void that just gets bigger. But it is relatable in that respect too, right? Because, yes. I mean, who among us has not been bullied? I think everybody, right? Yeah. Everybody in there, you know, has been bullied. At, at some point. At some point. Yeah. You kind of root for him a little bit in that respect where it's yeah. like, yeah, I would have loved a pit like yeah. that way back to lure some asshole. It's like, here you go. Yeah. Fucking eat him up. But he's also like a little bit of a sociopath. Yeah. And a little weirdo, you know? And he's planned some things out that are pretty nasty and weird. Like Yeah, he's pretty calculating. Like when he does that whole prank on the that librarian. Pre-records a message and then he phones her and he plays the message while he's peering in at her and the message is to make her take her top off or like get naked yeah he says that he kidnapped her niece and yeah it, and, and if you're gonna get your niece back you need to like flash <laughs> me through the and he's like window. yeah he's, <laughs> he's all, all peering watching, in. like what a little weirdo yeah like, so like that is like calculating shit yeah the babysitter gets a, a, another boyfriend and she starts seeing this mustache guy. <laughs> he's yeah. all super old, <laughs> even though he's probably like 21, really. He plants a bunch of stuff in his car from the missing people that he put in the pit. Right. So when the cops get involved later on, they go after him. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, it, 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 he, little bastard. Yeah. <laughs> you, you knew what you were doing. Really good social study of like sociopath kids and what they do and what goes on in their mind. And Sam Snyder's acting for uh, the character of Jamie portrays this perfectly. He does such a good oh. job of getting that that weirdness, that social awkwardness yeah. across, right? It's so good. Yeah, it's kind of awkward watching it. Lots of scenes with a lot of comedy in it, right? Just to liven it up a bit. Like there's that scene where after he runs out of money, can't afford any more meat from the butcher, he tries to lure this cow to the pit, but the cow's not moving. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> mur, mur. he's trying to like push it and yeah. stuff. He's just not moving. He's like, oh, I didn't want to feed you to him anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then like some of the kills, man, like yeah. when he starts feeding people to the pit, it's hilarious. Like when you, <laughs> like the boyfriend guy, go for yeah. it, Lord, Lord. he throws that, <laughs> oh, he falls in. Yo takes that old woman, he says he's gonna help her, like, take her for a stroll with her wheelchair, and they go right to the yeah. pit, he dumps her into the pit, then after you see him, like, yeah, he's, he's all right. riding the wheelchair. <laughs> Later on, when the cops get involved with all the missing people, the cops are a bunch of bumbling yeah. idiots, and a lot of humor comes from that, too. And they're super Canadian, yeah. too, right? Yeah. The music for this movie, man, for like a low-budget movie, the music is fantastic. It's like this big epic orchestral score and yeah it, it's like a big monster movie score almost yeah. like a creature feature film right? yeah it's really good and this movie has a very poignant ending which we're not gonna wreck exactly but it's got a perfect message which is kind of like a full circle sort of thing yeah. right yeah. and it's also symbolizes that I think like everybody has their own pit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone has a pit. Yeah, yeah. It's, what you do with it is what matters, right? <laughs> How you will evolve as a human and as an adult coming out of puberty is how you handle your own pit, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whether you feed it or not, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you are gonna feed it, you gotta feed it the right things. Yeah, and that's what this movie's all about, you know? Mm -hmm. It's about childhood and what shapes a kid and honestly parenting too 
The yep. parents are absent in this movie. Exactly. There yep. are no parents in this movie. I've abandoned my child! That's the biggest thing. Yeah. They need, kids need direction. Great fucking underrated, totally almost forgotten Canadian horror flick. That's right. And it's so deep. Like, at face value, you wouldn't think that this movie has those kinds of things to say, but it yeah. does. And that's what makes a great horror movie great. Yeah. Is those underlying themes. That's what makes them kind of live forever. Exactly. Is those themes. And they're still true today. So if you want to watch The Gate... You um, mean The Pit? <laughs> what? Don't get your mom to rent the movie. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's the message. <laughs> Check out 1981's The Pit. You won't be disappointed. You'll be coming coming back, scratching your head, right? Yeah. Thinking. Yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah. And until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>